Hello there guys, Moonlight Butterfly and Miku back again and welcome back to my book reading of The Skin I'm In. We are now up to chapter 22, so without any further ado, let's jump right into it. I'm almost home before I remember that I want to enter my writing in a library contest. So I turn around, walk back to the library and talk to the librarian. She says the contest winner will get $100. I sign myself up right away. I tell the librarian I'm going to turn in my papers tomorrow. At home after I eat, I go straight to my room and rewrite all of Akilma's stuff. I write them up real nice and neat. When I'm finished, I only have five pages. That ain't enough, I'm thinking, so I stay up half the night writing more. Mama comes to my room a few times and tells me to go to bed, but I beg her to let me stay up until I'm finished. Dear Diary, Kenjari isn't so skinny anymore. They had him work at the crew, so they let him eat good. I cried when I saw him. When I saw him, I curled up in a ball and hit my face. Kinjari came closer and sat next to me. There is no one more beautiful than you, Akilma, he said. That only made me cry more. I'll go where you go, he said in my ear. You are a good boat builder at home, I said. They will want to keep you here when the ship docks. You will be free, almost. Kinjari told me that he could never work on a boat like this just to see the sun and feel the wind whenever he pleased. I would rather be a slave with you than be free by myself. He said. Then he held my chin and helped me drink water from a wooden cup. At first, I would not look him in the eyes, but then when I did, I was glad. Kinjari's eyes warmed me like the sun. Akilma. I never talked to Mama about Akilma till last night. When I got up this morning, she asked how things turned out. I let her read my diary page. You're a good writer, Mama says, setting the papers down gently. You could be a professional writer someday. Mama continues, sounding just like Miss Saunders, like your father. Daddy wrote stuff? Stuff like this? I asked, putting my hand down on the papers. He wasn't as good as you, Mama says, going to the sink for a glass of water. She won't drink cold water from the fridge, just warm tap water. But your father, he wrote nice letters, poems, stuff like that. He ever wrote write a poem about you? Or me? I asked. Don't you remember the poem he wrote about you? The one about you being beautiful? Mama asked. Me? What? I asked, getting excited. No, I don't remember. When did Daddy write that? Where is it? I don't remember, Mama says, getting up for more water. Then she stops in her tracks. Well, now, let's see, she says, scratching her head. Maybe it's in that box in my closet. I put stuff there that your dad gave me. I forgot about the poem, though, till just now. I run up the stairs two at a time. I hop over the top step and almost fall into Mama's room. I push past the shoeboxes full of dream books and no good lottery tickets and fabric scraps and go for the one marked with my dad's name, Gregory. I lift the box out of the closet like a fragile piece of glass. But I'm too scared to open it up. When I do, tears come to my eyes. There's pictures of me and Daddy standing in front of the house, playing football in the yard. Kim carrying me on his back up the stairs. I haven't seen these pictures since Daddy died. Mom is yelling for me to hurry up because I gotta go to school in a half hour. I'm looking through all the pictures, but I don't see no poems. I find Daddy's birth certificate and the driver's license from when he drove a cab. I just about give up, but then I see a crumpled brown paper bag that's been smoothed out and folded tight. The words is written out real neat and straight and strong. Brown, beautiful, brilliant. My, my, Malika is brown, beautiful, brilliant, mine. Mom is calling me. I can't answer. My mouth is full of Daddy's words and my head is remembering him again. Tall, dark, and smiling all the time. Then gone when his cab crashed into that big old bread truck. Gone away from me for good till now. Maliki, you gotta go to school, girl, Mama says, heading upstairs. I fold the poem and stuff it in my pocket. Then I take the picture of Daddy with me on his back and put that in my other pocket. Find anything? Mama asks, sitting next to me on the bed. Just some stuff, I say, walking out of the room to get my jacket. Mama doesn't ask what kind of stuff. It ain't that she don't care. She just ain't ready to look or listen to Daddy again. She shoves the pictures back in the box and puts the box on the shelf. I kiss Mama goodbye, and soon she's in the sewing room, threading the needle. By the time I shut the front door, all I hear is that sewing machine going like crazy. All right, and that's the end of chapter 22. These chapters are very, very short, so yeah. We should be able to get through them fairly quickly. So possibly next week I'll do the next... Um, well, yeah, next week, definitely. I'll do... Um, I'll start um, uploading more. I'm sorry, guys. 
But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. That was pretty emotional. Malika finding stuff about her father in that poem. It's very nice, actually. I liked it. I liked it a lot. But anyway, guys, I'm going to cut it here. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe for more content on my channel. If you're enjoying my book reading series, please leave it down in the comments below. I greatly appreciate it. And until next time, this is Moonlight Butterfly Miku saying, bye, guys.